Postmenopausal weight gain, especially around the middle, can be a B, right? And almost impossible to get rid of. She is a stubborn, persistent, little drama queen with needs. So I did the 10 day belly slim down and here's what happened. I have had a little round belly for my entire life. As a child, it was called baby fat. I grow out of it. Once I did grow up into an adult, it was, I don't know, jeans maybe? And it was so frustrating because it was always, no matter how much weight I would lose, that would be the last thing to come off my stomach. And as soon as I ate anything, it would, the fat would just come right back. So when I heard about the, this 10 day belly slim down by Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci, I was curious, somewhat skeptical, but I got it, I bought it and I started reading and I realized that there are many things in that diet that are similar to the way that I eat normally and that I probably wouldn't have a, a hard time staying on it for 10 days. And right here, I want to enter a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, I've been reading a lot about eating disorders, and so if you are someone that has a history of that and can be triggered, click out of this video now because this diet uh, is not sustainable and um, it is very easy, I mean, even I felt it, to want to stay on the diet for longer than the 10 days. Any, everything in our lives right now is so out of control that it becomes seductive to think that this is one thing that I can control and it's working really well and I'm going to do it. And that is, is um, kind of the, the emotional danger to doing this 10 day plan. And it is 10 days for a reason. So before I started, uh, I took my measurements. And let me just say that I'm five feet four, four and a half. Uh, I have medium bones, and when I switched to eating a much cleaner, um, more traditional whole foods diet, my weight stabilized. It stabilized around 118. This past year, culminating with a very crappy fall and winter, which I will go into, but I did a lot of baking and a lot of comfort eating. And so uh, when I started this diet, I want to give you my measurements. I was, uh, I weighed 122.8 pounds, so almost 123 pounds. Uh, when I finished the diet, I was down to 119.6, and the last time I weighed in, which was a couple of days ago, I was 119.3. My waist measurement when I started was 30 inches. Uh, at the end of 10 days, it was 27 and three quarters inches, and uh, the last time I checked, which was again two days ago, it was 27 and a half, so the weight's still coming down. But after the 10 days, the total inches lost off my waist was two and a quarter. My belly button started at 33 inches and at the end it was 30 and a half, so two and a half inches off my belly button. And I also took the measurement of one inch below my belly button and that was 34 and a half inches. And after the 10 days, it was down to 32 and a half inches, so two inches off the lower my lower abdomen. So this, this 10 day slim down consists of three parts, eating nutrient dense, whole foods and superfoods, drinking a lot of bone broth and intermittent fasting. So when you think about what you're actually eating, you're eating protein, fat and low starch fiber vegetables. You have a seven hour eating window and uh, bone broth is consumed in between the fasting, your fasting hours and your eating window so that the, you have, uh, you're, you're really loading up your body with a lot of minerals, uh, nutrients that are hard to get in other ways. If you've been with the channel for a while, you know that I love my homemade bone broth. So when I first saw that, that really, um, I was intrigued. I really wanted to learn more about this diet when I, when I saw what the components consisted of. So I have notes, I have my little notebook right here because there is a lot of information and I wanna make sure that I give it to you correctly because uh, the diet 
as I said, uh, worked has worked really well for me. It's been it was very easy. My experience being on it was very easy. So let's talk about what it's supposed to do. So excess fat in the middle is usually related to elevated cortisol levels. It can become insulin resistant, uh, causing elevated insulin levels, leading to weight gain, diabetes, high cholesterol, and a lot more. This diet is supposed to take inches off your waist and middle, help you to lose weight, minimize food cravings, which it did for me, gives, give you better hair, skin, nails, joints, less bloating and acid reflux, and possibly improve your blood sugar. This is according to her book, to the book. You want to have a compressed eating window. They recommend seven hours, which is what I did. I ate from 11 to six. Bone broth loading in between your meals, uh, because in that seven hours, you actually have two meals. And then collagen, whole foods, and superfoods. So there are many health benefits of giving your body a break from food for 16 hours, which I believe is what that is. 17 hours for that long fasting period. There are benefits for your brain, stress, sleep, and your hormones. Uh, and so you're having two meals in a seven hour window. In between those meals, you drink a bone broth soup that she has lots of recipes that you can make for yourself in the afternoon as a snack after your morning bre breakfast. And that's because bone broth has a fat flushing amino acid called glycine and it also keeps helps you to stay hydrated and of course you should also be getting your regular amounts of water during this time as well if you have not seen my bone broth bit video about how i make my homemade bone broth i'll put it up there and down below and then um because Bone broth has glucosamine and chondroitin for your joints. It's got collagen, it's got magnesium, so you get better sleep. Uh, it fights inflammation, helps you burn fat faster, and uh, it helps to detoxify and heal your gut. So the foods that you can eat on this diet include all types of protein. It is also important to make sure that the protein that you're having is extremely clean. So grass-fed meats, free-range poultry, organic, uh, wild-caught fish. Deli meats are fine provided they are nitrate and nitrite free. Organic is even better. As far as fruits, it's berries only and grapefruit if you happen to have it around. Any kind of leafy vegetable, broccoli, cauliflower, celery, cucumbers, uh, eggplant, asparagus. I mean, the list is exhaustive and there is no limit to the amount and kinds of herbs and spices that you can have from exotic to salt and pepper, basil, thyme, ginger, garlic, fennel, I, it, cumin, any kind of spice that you want, have as much of it, cinnamon, nutmeg, as much as you want, as often as you want and two servings of fat at every meal. It can be coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil, ghee, almond butters, peanut butter, olives, nuts, seeds. Beverages include water, <laughs> bone broth, of course, coffee or tea provided they are unsweetened and uncreamed, so black coffee, black tea. Uh, no sweeteners, no artificial sweeteners, no creamers, and if you're purchasing your bone broth, you want to make sure that it has no yeast and no starchy additives to it to thicken it. And of course, no sugar. Obviously, if you are vegan, this diet is not for you. Uh, and if you are a vegetarian, you can add fermented dairy to your diet as well. All for, otherwise, fermented, all fermented foods are good. So there are a lot of foods that you can eat and any, like I said, any kind, and any kind of herbs under the sun. What you cannot have on this diet are no sugars and no starchy vegetables or fruits. So no potatoes, no sweet potatoes, yams, um, no pumpkin, no winter squash or carrots, no beets, turnips, parsnips, and no corn. This is why I love this woman. But I digress. 
Yeah, that's a lot of very healthy foods that are being eliminated. But the reason why is because you are retraining your body to turn from processing sugar as its form of energy to processing fat as its form of energy, specifically belly fat. So yes, yeah, so for 10 days, there's a lot of healthy foods that you are not going to be able to eat. And believe me, a diet that does not include sweet potatoes or carrots is not one that I want to be on for very long. Oh, and the, the other thing that I forgot to mention that you cannot have is grains. So no oats, rice, bread, none of that. So no grains on this diet. Do not do this diet if you have any significant medical conditions, if you're diabetic or taking blood sugar lowering, me lowering medications. You'll want to work with your doctor and it's not something you should even think about doing unless your diabetes is well under control. If you're pregnant or nursing or recovering from an injury, again, check with a doctor. And of course, if you have an eating disorder, stay far, far away. Also, if you're under 18, stay far, far away. Fat cells do play a role in the body's detoxification process. So between uh, sending your body into fat burning mode and going through sugar withdrawal, you may feel pretty awful during those first few days. You can expect that and just know that it will. you will get through it. There is an other side. If you stick with it, you will get through it. Let me just give you like a day of eating for me. I would start my day with a, uh, I would have a big glass of water. I would then have a cup of bone broth. And that would, sometimes I might feel a little hungry after that. But if I wait about t waited about 10 minutes, it would go away and I would be fine until 11 o'clock when it was time for my first meal of the day. For my first meal of the day, always it would be a collagen protein smoothie. Bear, it would have vegetables, serving of fat. In fact, I'm going to cut and show you exactly the shake that I, the protein shake that I would make every day. Be right back. So we start with putting in some mixed berries, about a handful. This is raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries. You can use either hemp seeds, flax seeds, or chia seeds. I'm putting, because I am postmenopausal and I use flax seeds to balance my hormones, I'm putting in two tablespoons, so two tablespoons of any seed. I've got a cucumber here. Just gonna give it a rough chop. So I'm putting in some cucumber. I've got some celery. Put some of that in. I'm also going to put in some kale, but I'll put that in at the end. Her protein of choice is also my protein of choice, and that is whey protein. Whey protein concentrate, not isolate. Put in about a scoop of that. And then something that I do is I put in a little bit of this Bonnie prebiotic uh, fiber supplement. I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of this. This is a flavored like hazelnut chocolate, but I really don't, you really don't taste it. Next, I'm going to add some almond milk. This is unsweetened, no additives, like no vitamins or anything else added into it. It's from Calafia Farms. And I just eyeball this. On the, in the book, there are actual measurements, but... I just put in enough for me to have one. We're going to add a little more almond. I've got almond butter. This is a very affordable brand of almond butter. Uh, it's the Simple Truth one. And I'm just gonna put in a healthy spoonful. This is good for extra fats and protein. It also tastes delicious. I don't like almonds, but I love almond butter. And again, no sugar. So this is just almonds. That's the only thing that's in here. I'm gonna put in a dash of cinnamon and then just the leaves of this kale stalk. She recommends using a mixture of vegetables in your smoothie that works out to about three servings. So that's what I have here. And now this is ready to blend and mix up. So I'll be right back. So 
So after that, I would stay full for maybe three hours or so. I wouldn't think about, and then I would have sort of my afternoon soup, bone broth soup. Uh, she has a lot of really cool recipes in the book. Two that I, I loved was uh, her cream of broccoli soup that is made with bone broth, broccoli, a little garlic, and uh, almond milk or coconut milk at, to make it creamy. I also liked her, she had a, a cream of tomato soup that also had spinach in it as well. You not, you eat that and you're you're pretty much done for the rest of the afternoon. And if you just wanted to just drink straight bone broth, you could do that as well. Then for your evening meal, you would want to have a serving of protein. Then you would have one serving of vegetables. I usually had two. And you would also want to include some sort of a fermented or probiotic rich food along with it. So sauerkraut, I make fermented relish, so I would often just have that on the side. And then uh, in, for if I wanted a quote unquote dessert, I would have raspberries and some nuts. And that would be that, that would be it. Sometimes I put almond butter over the raspberries. That was really good. I, once I finished my water for the day, I was done. I didn't need or want any more food than that. So. It was very easy for me to sustain it. The only thing that I actually craved was protein. There were some times in the afternoon during that soup session that I just wanted a piece of chicken, <laughs> but I, I resisted, I didn't do it. And um, broccoli was the other thing that I craved, specifically broccoli that was well steamed with a little salt and pepper and some ghee poured over it. it uh, ugh. I would have to have that with dinner most nights. The kinds of things that I made for dinner would be maybe, you know, something simple, a piece of chicken or chicken breast or something, uh, sauteed with some roasted cauliflower or roasted, another roasted vegetable or, you know, shard, leafy greens, nothing really exotic. I basically ate the way that I normally ate. I just didn't have potatoes or bread. One of the things I love to have for dinner was chili. Grass-fed Angus beef with no beans and lots of vegetables like um, Anaheim chilies and r red bell pepper, onion. Uh, I would even chop up some zucchini and throw that in there as well just to give it even more vegetables. And I still make that. Uh, in fact, I had some last night. <laughs> I completely lost my taste for sugar. I completely lost my taste for coffee as well. Uh, even now, uh, like I didn't have coffee this morning. I more mornings go by that I don't have it than, than I actually do. I was concerned that I might lose too much weight. I didn't weigh myself throughout the, the 10 days. Uh, and as it turned out, my weight did stabilize at a decent spot and it may continue uh, because I have continued the intermittent fasting. Now my eating window is no longer seven hours, it's eight hours. So I have my first meal at 10 and again, I'm done by six o'clock in the evening. But that gives me an opportunity to actually have three meals a day with a good, uh, no snacks, but a good three to four hours in between meals, which is ideal for your body's, the way your body likes to digest and use its food. During the first uh, five to six days, I felt nothing, I felt fine. I wasn't even sure that I was losing any weight or any belly fat at that point. Uh, around day six, I started to feel lighter in terms of energy, feel like I had more energy. I still feel that way now. Um, I had my protein smoothie this morning. That was, what time is it? About two hours ago. And I'm happy and satiated. Another thing you want to do is you eat to satiety. You kind of retrain your brain to really listen to your body and when you're full, you're full and you stop. The diet has helped me get back into touch with that sort of feeling of I'm full now, I'm satisfied, I can go on with my day. After day six, I noticed that uh, I'm postmenopausal, obviously I'm 66, I'm way postmenopausal, but I have kept my hot flashes and other menopausal issues under control for the last two years by eating uh, two tablespoons of flax seeds, ground up flax seeds every day. In my smoothies, uh, I continued to put the two tablespoons of flax seeds in there because you could put in flax, hemp, or uh, chia seeds. So I chose flax. And 
nevertheless, my hot flashes came back like gangbusters every hour. Starting on day, like day by day seven, I was like, what is wrong with me? At the time, I couldn't figure out why. Uh, thinking on it now, I have a feeling that it might be because as your body starts to process that, that fat, that fat also holds toxins and you're releasing those toxins now into the bloodstream. And I think that it might have screwed up my hormonal balance a little bit. Uh, that's the only thing that I could think of uh, because now the hot flashes are back under control. I probably get one, I still get one in the evening, one or two in the evening, but I can go all day and I don't have hot flashes anymore. So body is still adjusting, I guess, to this newer way of eating, but otherwise it's been great. I, I feel great. The other thing that you want to think about when you're doing this diet is doing just light exercising, nothing too strenuous. So you want to do some strength, a little bit of you know easy cardio, like I said, walking, and just take it easy on yourself. I'm staying with the intermittent fasting because I want my belly weight to stay off. And so far it has. And so, yeah, that that's it. <laughs> that is my, what happened when I did the 10 day belly slim down. Now, the uh, author, Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci, has another book of the bone broth diet. It's what you do after you come off your 10-day reset so that you can, if you have a lot more weight to lose, you will continue to lose weight easily. I did not, I have not tried that plan. I'm basically just going back to my traditional way of eating without desserts or sweets or cookies or things like that. With this diet, there's no calorie counting, no portion, no calorie restriction. It's helping, it helps you to have a normal relationship with food. Food is fuel and if you have an emotional attachment to food, it can help uh, calm that down. Food is not something that you feel your way through, it's something that you use as fuel. If you want to have an emotional attachment to something, have it to your body, this beautiful body that God has given you to, that gets you from place to place and helps you to do the things that you need to get done. That, yeah, that that's going to wrap it up, I guess. Now, if you have done this diet, I'd love to hear from you. If it's something that you think you might want to try and you have more questions for me, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if I get enough questions, I'll do a separate video and answer them all. But otherwise, uh, it, it was a good experience. I'm glad I did it. I eat differently. I feel great. I look uh, <laughs> really good in my jeans, which are now, you know, comfortable jeans before are now too big and my jeans that weren't all that comfortable fit fine. So, uh, it's, it was a set, a success for me. So anyway, yeah, um, thank you if you've watched this this far. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, then please uh, subscribe. I'd love to have you. And uh, leave me a comment letting me know, uh, you know your thoughts. And I will talk to you again in my next video. So until I see you in that video, I'm wishing you a wonderful day, a wonderful week. I want you to take good care of yourselves. And I will talk to you again very, very soon. Bye.